Tuesday, May 24th. Please stand for our invocation led by Pastor Alan Eldred and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, how would be your great and wonderful name. We thank you for the day that you've given to us, and you have told us that we need to rejoice and be glad in it, and help us to use this day in a way that will glorify you. Father, I pray that you will be with this city council. I'm thankful for each member of the council. I pray that you will bless them with vision, with wisdom, with courage as they lead our city. And we thank you for everything that they do, and we're thankful, Father, for everyone who contributes to the ongoing of the city of Mobile. Bless them and be with them. We especially want to pray for Councilman Small and his sister, that your healing power will continue to be at work in his life. Please watch over him and bless him, and we pray that they will be able to get back to our city safely in time. Thank you, Father, for being there for us at all times. We love you and we thank you for loving us. Guide us throughout the rest of this day and this meeting. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if you would, um, please remain standing. Um, we all know about our co friend and colleague, um, C.J. Small, who is in Africa, and he has been wounded by, by an ambush over the weekend. So I would ask you all, if you would please, just bow your heads in silent prayer for C.J. and his sister and for a safe recovery and return back home. Roll call, President Gregory. Here. Vice President Richardson. Here. Councilmember Manzi. Here. Councilmember Small. Councilmember Williams. Here. Councilmember Days. Here. Councilmember Rich. Here. Statement of rules. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. We're still trying to get used to our new temporary quarters here as uh, the county makes some improvements over on in the auditorium which uh, I'm sure will be much appreciated by all of us when uh, it gets done. We have mentioned uh, our friend and colleague, C.J. Small, who is not with us today. And we're all wearing these white ribbons, if you would notice. Um, this is in honor of C.J., and we will wear these until he gets back home safe and sound. And so uh, if you would like to get one, please see our council staff over here, um, the clerk's office, and they will make one available to you. I want to provide the latest. On uh, Mr. Small, as you all know, of course, he was shot in the face over the weekend in Johannesburg, South Africa, and this was during an ambush and robbery of a tour bus that he was riding on. Then following the incident, he was taken to a hospital for treatment with the cooperation and assistance of many, many friends and supporters, both in Johannesburg and here in Alabama. CJ was transferred to a private hospital and he's receiving the best of care as he awaits the opportunity to return home. He is in stable condition. And of course, our thoughts and our prayers are with him and his family. In the interim, the council office is working together to be sure that any needs and concerns of Mr. Small's constituents in District 3 are met. We have distributed information um, about the incident to the media and also with contact information for council members Richardson and Manzi, who have stepped up to um, take any phone calls and emails that come in from constituents in uh, Mr. Small's district. So thank you to everybody for what you have done. Thanks to LaVon and Fred for their offer to uh, take these phone calls. And of course, our council staff as well for all of your help and Lisa and just everyone who has um, come forward. There has been a tremendous outpouring of support for CJ in the area. And uh, we really appreciate that. As we get updates, um, you know, we will share what we can, but primarily the information on CJ's care and any updates 
are coming from his family attorney, and that is Raymond Bell, and I believe all of the media has his contact information as well. On today's agenda, we will be considering some more facility upgrades throughout the city, including two dog parks. I know that's something that everybody is interested in, more doggy parks. Also, the Bolton Branch Creek Channel drainage improvements are on the agenda to be voted on today. We also will be looking at a transportation enhancement program grant for the Bitten Spur area. That's in Mr. Dave's district with a city match that will be paid for by the village of Spring Hill. The Memorial Day weekend is ahead. Yay, we have a holiday. But the other news we need to tell everybody is that the garbage and trash routes will be running as usual. We always get a lot of phone calls when there's a holiday, especially a Monday holiday. So we want to make sure that everybody understands that all of our garbage and trash routes will be running as normal. This afternoon, we will have a finance committee meeting at 2 o'clock. We are in the middle of all of our capital improvement program planning, and so that's what we will be looking at today. Uh, continuing to look at uh, the areas where the money will be funded, uh, putting some finishing touches on that. So again, that's at 2 o'clock upstairs on the ninth floor. And a reminder, tomorrow is the annual State of the City and County, sponsored by the Chamber, where you'll have updates from Mayor Stimson, from Jerry Carl over at the County Commission, as well as from the Chamber on everything we have done this year, all of our successes, and where we are going in the future. This is an annual event, something that we all look forward to. That's at the Convention Center tomorrow and it begins at noon. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ms. Lambert. Approval of minutes of May 17th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Communications from the mayor. Uh, officially proclaimed by Mayor William S. Stimson, 108th Mayor of the City of Mobile. I think it's appropriate that this is uh, National Boating Week because being Memorial Day weekend, it, um, it's everybody's starting to get out in their boats and they need to make sure they're safe. So, Bill, would you like to make a few comments, please? Oh, thank you. Yeah. The National Safe Boating Week actually was... Uh, developed by the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary uh, long ago, and it was recognized by President Eisenhower uh, by 1957 and has been a uh, strong boating safety program, which uh, feature is featured the week prior to Memorial Day, which is the traditional start of the boating season for most of the country. Uh, what the Coast Guard Auxiliary and Coast Guard units in the area are involved in is such things as exhibits and special programs, media coverage. Uh, they're out there, we're out there spreading the boating safety message and encouraging boaters to become educated <coughs> and help save lives. As a central theme to the National Safe Boating Week, which is uh, in this poster over here, it's wear it. There's a reason behind that, because the occasional boaters are most likely to have accidents and the statistics are very sad that 71% of all the fatalities on the water are drownings. And of that 71%, 85% of the individuals were not wearing life jackets. So over and over again, this will be the constant theme. Put that life jacket on. So some of the activities that you'll see throughout the rest of this week and actually throughout the year, uh, the auxiliary will be providing uh, vessel safety checks. Those are free. You can go on the internet and request one or go come to your house or go to the boat ramps. Uh, we're going to have boating safety exhibits at uh, some of the sporting goods and marine places. Uh, we're actually providing uh, water safety presentations to school kids in, in different environments that they're at. And also we conduct the uh, boating safety classes that allow the uh, individuals to get their uh, Alabama voters license. But these type of activities are going on nationwide. It, Coast Guard flotillas and Coast Guard units. So again, the number one message about this day in National Safe Boating Week 
is be safe on the water and wear it. Mayor, thank you. This is our Officer of the Month, um, Officer Watts. Uh, officer Demetrius Watts has rendered a service to the City of Mobile which deserves special recognition. During the month of April, Officer Watts serviced 130 calls, 21 backings, six felony arrests, 30 misdemeanor arrests, and five tickets. Specifically on Friday, the 29th of April, Officer Watts responded to the American Inn for the report of a burglary of an iPad and two iPhones. The victims had left their door latch open and thieves went into the room of the Jamison Inn and removed the items. Officer Watts responded to the scene of the offense and took the report. And took the report. Some officers would have stopped there, but Officer Watts spoke to witnesses and was able to hone in on the location of the suspects. Officer Watts conducted a knock and talk and found sore subjects for four subjects, all of whom were complicit in the burglary. Officer Watts was able to return the stolen property to the victims and also charged the subjects with possession of marijuana and criminal trespassing. His efforts result that it resulted in four felonies and six demeanors being leveled against the suspects. The next day, Officer Watts was dispatched to the Old Shell Road in reference to an escort involving a domestic dispute. The complainant advised that her items had been taken by her boyfriend. Officer Watts went to the boyfriend's workplace and found the suspect. The items were not in his possession, but a database search also revealed that he had eight misdemeanor warrants for failing to appear on traffic offenses and several domestic violence warrants. Officer Watts once again went to extra dis distance and thoroughly worked a call and cleared out several active warrants. He strives every day that he is on duty to make the city of Mobile the safest in America. He has keen observation skills and dedication to duty and allow, that allows him to make substantial arrests for the month of April 2016. As described above, Officer Watts is prudent in his efforts to rid the city of Mobile of the criminal element. His initiative, enthusiasm, and excellence in his overall <coughs> performance show a proactive police style and is a tremendous asset to the city of Mobile. Now, therefore, on behalf of all the citizens, we are pleased to award the certificate of recognition to him as Officer of the Month for April 2016 with our sincerest thanks. Thank you very much, Officer. <laughs> Other remarks include uh, just pointing out that Mobile Botanical Gardens has already begun a $150,000 transform transformational makeover this year through funds from the city um, capital improvement projects. Um, these include upgrades to parking, drainage, electrical fencing, and new pedestrian walkways. Now, eventually, it'll showcase 100 acres of gardens, trails, and forests that have been a fixture for our community for more than 40 years. We have a dedicated group of individuals that work diligently to try to make sure that the botanical gardens are something that visitors will want to see and it's already a jewel in our community but it certainly will be better once we complete these renovations. <clears throat> uh, two new dog parks uh, and everybody thinks dog parks are for dogs. Uh, they're really not for dogs. They're for people and their dogs. And I'm reminded that uh, having been in office um, matter of fact, I wasn't even in office. I was running for office, and the mayor of St. Petersburg, who had been a new mayor several years previously, said the single thing that they did in St. Petersburg to draw their community together so that neighbors became aware of who their neighbors were was putting in dog parks. He said, for the dollar spent, there is nothing that you can spend money on that gets a greater return for creating a community than building a dog park. The two dog parks that are being built, one of them is at um, Public Safety Memorial Park. It's being built with money that was left over when we, uh, when we completed the skating park. 
So that's a huge uh, thing to have a park with uh, both of those amenities in it. So we're excited about that. But at, in Crawford Park, <coughs> um, the, the money for that was raised by citizens who decided they wanted to have a park there. And they started doing fundraisers and that went out and raised the money themselves. So that's a huge bonus. Plus, there's some match from the city, I think. Is that correct also? Yes, sir. He has a, a match. Great deal. Yes, he has a match. But, th but if it had not been for the citizens that's right. That's right. That, that were interested in it, it's one of those things that probably would not have happened in our community. So um, we're grateful to see that happening. Um, the trip to Cuba. That's my first trip to Cuba. I went with, um, I'm not sure if what you had to frame the expectations, but I knew that my parents had spent their honeymoon there. And I believe I was actually went to the hotel where they spent their honeymoon. But it's a city of contrast um, in, in this regard. The, what you see in these buildings, uh, there are magnificent buildings that have been allowed to deteriorate, being unpainted and so forth which in one regard is kind of heartbreaking, uh, but you do start you're starting to see some restoration going on. Uh, and those that are being restored are absolutely uh, spectacular. And the purpose of our trip was to build relationships with government officials to make sure that we're interested in continuing the educational exchanges, <laughs> cultural exchanges, and uh, to the degree that we can do so within the bounds of the current law in the United States to increase our trade uh, through the port mobile with, with Cuba. There's a lot of money that's being invested in Cuba right now. We, uh, we visited a container port where the Brazilian government and maybe a, a private company have put $1.5 billion in a container port. Uh, it's certainly state of the art. Uh, they are making that investment uh, thinking that they will get some of the post Panamax uh, container trade. So there are other people that are investing there, uh, but the, the government officials were very interested in making sure that the delegation from Mobile understood that they needed assistance in trying to convince our United States Congress to relax the, you know, the trade agreements um, uh, so that we could resume normal trade. So anyway, all in all, it was a, a very interesting trip. Um, I'm glad I went. I would go back. Um, I don't know if you would say you find this amusing or not, but in the hotel where we were staying, which was a very nice hotel, there were eight of us. And there was somebody in room 240, 340, 440, 540, 640. And I'm thinking, why did they stack us all up in there like that? But I'll let you surmise why they did that. Uh, but anyway, we left our computers at home. I left my computer at home and my cell phone. And you can live without both of them if you just try. <laughs> or if you're worried about somebody tapping into it. So anyway, all in all, really a, a great trip. Uh, the future for the Port of Mobile and the City of Mobile, I think, is very bright, assuming the Cuban government and the United States government can work out uh, you know, trade uh, agreements. Uh, I want to echo what uh, Council President uh, Gregory said about um, Councilman Small, about us praying for his full and complete recovery. And so I just encourage everybody to do that. So thank you very much. And we asked the mayor earlier if he um, partook in any of the, the Cuban, um, I guess, uh, not amenities, but things known in, in Cuba, which would be <coughs> the rum. And of course, cigars and that sort of thing. And he admitted to at least one, I think. <laughs> well, what I've told her. <laughs> or at said, least what he told me about. I, right. I said that I did not smoke any cigars, but I brought some home for somebody that may smoke them. Uh, but I saw somebody down there smoking them that was on the trip. <laughs> but I won't reveal that. And I said, you know, when well. you try to bring when you try to bring uh, the spirits home in your suitcase. Be careful because they do break, and so what I tried to bring home is now in all my clothes. <laughs> anyway, things like that happen. All right. Well, thank you, Mayor. Appreciate that. Yeah. Monthly finance report. Um, I don't see Paul here. Um, we have a finance committee meeting um, this afternoon, so I guess we'll just postpone any of those discussions until 2 o'clock. Was it, um, Madam President, I just wondered if the administration was, was that the plan that not to do it today? 
Um, I don't know. We could just cover it. Just uh, the, on the monthly finance. Monthly finance. Um, uh, that was scheduled before. While I was in Cubis, I do not know. Okay. And Paul is not here, but I know he's coming back. Yeah. Th this is just the normal monthly. Yeah. Um, finance report today. So, um, but, I, but I do think that there's some specific things that have been asked that he's trying to address about um, capital monies. Uh, and I think that, meetings, yeah. that it also is going to address some of the capital improvement program. Right. Well, that, that's what the meeting this afternoon is about. What we do today is just a normal monthly finance report. And I just saw that Paul was not here. Yeah. So he will do that so, this afternoon. Okay. We'll just get that this afternoon. Adoption of the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Appeals. We have a request for a waiver of the noise ordinance <coughs> on June the 3rd on Costa Riti Street, May 29th on Colonial Court, May 29th North Block of Macy Place between Dolphin Street and Monterey Place, July 4th on Glenwood Street, J June 4th on Hillcrest Road, July 2nd on Burton Wood Drive, <coughs> May 28th on Taylor Place. All right, so moved. Second. Any discussion on these appeals? All in yes, favor? Yeah. Um, yes, Madam President. I didn't call that one yet. I'm going to call it separate. Thank you. All right. Then all, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, request for waiver of the noise ordinance on July 4th on Charles Street. Uh, request that we, I move that we would uh, table this item for a period of two weeks. Right. Second. Is there time to table it for two weeks? Mm -mm. What, what's the date on it? July the 4th is it's, it's going yeah, to be yeah, you'll have two weeks. Uh, or in the 64026 when we get to that one. It's, that's when we got to. It's no, no, no. This is a, no, this this is a noise, noise waiver. Oh, no, oh, noise waiver. Yeah, okay. This is noise. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. And, and we're just going to hold it over for yeah, two for weeks. Yeah, for two weeks, and that two still weeks. gives okay. them time because it's not until July. Okay. What's that date just so that we know the date in two weeks? Do we have that? I'm sorry. I guess I'll take it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Do they vote? Vote. Hmm? Vote. Oh, mm -hmm. all in favor? Laying it over two weeks. Opposed? Okay. Public hearing. Today is a public hearing to accept public comments on the proposed sidewalk plan for Bitten Spur Road and a TAP program grant application. All right, this is a public hearing. If there's anyone in the audience who would like to speak to this, you can please come to the podium, give us your name and address for the record, and you'll have five minutes to speak. At the end of four minutes, you'll hear the buzzer, which means that you need to go ahead and wrap it up. So anyone in the audience like to speak to this? All right, thank you. Public hearing is closed. Public hearing to consider amend amendments and adoption of the 2012 International Property Maintenance Code. All right, again, this is a public hearing. If anyone would like to speak to this, please come to the podium. Okay, public hearing up. Okay, Elizabeth? It's a public hearing. It's a public hearing. Yeah, you don't have to sign in. I just want to commend Jeff and the team and the administration and y'all for, for continuing to push on blight. As, as you'll see on this document, I just happened to be rereading the survey that we did uh, yesterday. I didn't know this was on the agenda, but and, and in this survey, comment after comment after comment was all about blight. And, and as Jeff mentioned, it, you need lots of different tools, and, 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 I, and I just want to commend you for continuing to push on this. And, and I know it's sometimes uh, hard and, and uh, politically difficult, but it is a very important for maintaining property values uh, in, a, in a neighborhood. And thank you. All right. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak to this? Please come to the podium. All right. Public hearing is closed. Public hearing to amend Chapter 64.3.1 of the Mobile City Code Downtown Development District. Again, this is a public hearing, so if there's anyone who would like to speak to um, this particular code for Downtown Development District, please come to the podium. Elizabeth, you going to speak to this one? <laughs> so today's a bit of an anniversary for me. On May the 29th, 1990, I uh, was introduced to this council uh, on my first day on the job. 
and I've been working on downtown uh, Mobile for uh, ever since, and I've, it's been a great pleasure. I spent 15 years with the city and then the last uh, 10 or so with the Downtown Alliance. During that time, nobody has ever said to me, let's just keep it just like it is. Let's don't do anything. Let's don't push. Let's don't create a new vision. Uh, nobody has said that. People have continuously said to let's chart a vision for rebuilding this downtown as a walkable, vibrant place that is welcoming to all and, uh, and, and, and that we can be proud of <coughs> as we move forward. And so the Downtown Development Code that we've worked on over the last few years is a response to kind of codifying some of the things in the new plan that was done in, in the mid-aughts, if you will. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it's been an, imp an important part towards moving our city towards that higher level of vision. Walkability is more than just sidewalks. It's about how we build our city back. And, and, and every detail that's in this code is, is based on extensive research that people do on, on human beings and how they think about their city. And so uh, this, this revision, we told you at the time that let's get it adopted, adopted but it's not going to be a static do document. It's going to be a living document. And, it's gonna, and, and we want to constantly uh, update it, learn from our experiences. So this has been going on for about two years now. Learn from it. We're adding some sections on existing buildings, tweaking some things, and also moving forward in the example of the C Streets, where our city is now has a new vision for Water Street and a new vision for Broad Street and a new vision for Beauregard, and 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 and, and bringing bringing those streets into into this new time. So thank you for your support of it in the past and look forward to working with you um, at the committee level, et cetera. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak to this? Okay, public hearing is closed. Public hearing to amend chapter 64 of the Mobile City Code to eliminate conflict between the off-street parking requirements in the downtown development district code and describe <coughs> exempted areas. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak to this? The downtown development district code Exempted areas for parking. All right. <laughs> Public Elizabeth, you gonna speak to this too? Come on. <laughs> All right. No, no, no. I think that's yeah. All right. Public hearing is closed. Public hearing to rezone properties at 300 North Water Street and 305 Dell Shemps Drive, southeast corner of Adams Street and North Water Street, extending to the northwest corner of Congress Street and Dell Shemps Drive from I1 to B4. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak to this uh, rezoning? <coughs> All right, public hearing is closed. Presentation of petitions and other communications to the council. <coughs> um, at this time we have, oh, Rosalind Jones, Ms. Rosalind Jones from Lafayette Heights. Malone, Malone. I think she's Malone? saying her name is Malone. Oh, oh Malone. Yes, oh, okay. Sorry, I'm, I apologize. Good evening or morning, whichever the case may be. Uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be a citizen of the United States of America. Now, I'm glad to know it's the government, all the people, and for the people. I'm a senior citizen. I live across the street from Thomas Sullivan Center. And I got familiar with it in 2002. My mother had a stroke. She was paralyzed on her left side. Had not it been for the Thomas Sullivan Center, I don't know what I've done because I was her cat yellow giver. And I appreciate it. And it was needful to have a, a nutritious meal be brought to our house because I was not able to leave her alone. She couldn't talk. So it's just a beacon of hope for us. And now the sale program, it seems like, has I got a snag. I don't know what's happening. But I hope it can be resolved because the people who are working there have been there over 17 years, and I don't see why a res 
a problem could not be resolved in 17 years, so now they are feeding us food that we can't eat. I'm a senior citizen. I, have to, I can't have salt. I'm on a salt-free diet. And they'll bring us salt, potato chips. I can't have potatoes. I can't drink, I can't drink uh, apple, apple juice. I can't have that kind of stuff. Uh, at my age, is medication that I take, but now I can get a, a nutrition meal at the Thomas Southern Center. And what they are saying is, we have, they like it, they like, they like, they like at a brick wall. We either accept what they do, or they'll get rid of all our staff here who have been there so efficiently working with us. Mm -hmm. on, on Fridays, I schedule you to get a pedicure and a manicure. I cannot go, I cannot afford to go to the salon to get that. But she, our center, Mary Williams, gives that to us free. She supplies the, the, uh, all the stuff we need and gives us a pedicure for free. She is also instrumental in teaching us how to play bingo. Now, I don't know yet how to do it, but I plan to. But she teaches us that, and she brings gifts out of her own money. So if we win, we get a little prize. And, and then she gives us nutritious meat. They serve nutritious meal there. This has been going on as long as over, I know over 2000, 2002 when my mother was sick. And it's been going on ever since. And I cannot understand why it cannot continue as it was. Now, I hear about all these, about dogs and things and all that, but why can't some of that be, you know, we send a city, we folks in this, I've been, a, I worked in the city for 30 years at Mobile Public Library, and I don't see why something can't be set aside for senior city like they're trying to kick us to the curb or something. I don't know what the problem is, but I feel like any problem can be resolved with enough initiative and concern. So I know I'm a considered citizen, concerned citizen. I've been voting since I've been able to vote, live to vote. And I still vote, and I'm still in my right mind. Thank the Lord. So I just think, if we reconsider and consider us older people, we are here. We are in a place we go where we get nutrition food. We can also get spiritual fed by having Bible study classes. We do that too. I know because I'm a part of it. And it's really educational. Right now, Lord willing, May 31st, I'll be teaching a class at National Baptist College of Christian Education. Because at the inception, they, uh, they have a computer. And I can help to use that computer and work it out my programs. And I'm trying to learn how to use email. All this is implemented through Mary Williams at our center. Mary, whatever, Mary, Mary Brown, Mary Brown, sorry, Mary Brown. And she does that because she loves us, she cares for us, and it gives us motivation to get up in the morning. Since I'm very tired, it gives me motivation to get up and come to the center across the street. Because I know there's a lot of things going on. We have, we have sewing classes going on and everything. All kind of things, you know, we do that. So I certainly hope they can reconsider this. To the, and not just uh, like we are. I don't know what to call it. Thank you, sir. All right. Hold on, Thank, uh, all right, Mr. Richardson has a question. Ms. Malone? Yes. I'm Ms. Malone. Oh, you're Ms. Malone. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's Ms. Lewis. Oh, no, oh okay. okay. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. Uh, Mr. Richardson has a question. So yes. What, what, there's a good, what, what is happening? What is not happening that you want to happen? I would like to have a bus, take us to other centers. So you want a bus? Let's go to the fellowship. Okay. Okay, you, so I would like to have a bus, and I would like to have a, 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 you know, a, a, a nutrition meal each night, and I would like um, are, are you saying that you're not getting a nutrition meal? No, no, I can't eat Subway, and I can't eat, and what they're doing, I can't eat. I ate Subway, and they had to go down to my turkey, and I heard what. So, so the, but the change in the food has been recent, or has this it's always been a fact? It's been three weeks, yeah. Oh, okay. But prior okay. to that, I was just a young girl. Okay. I'm still pretty young.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Rosalind Fair with Malone, and I'm a, also a member of the Thomas Sullivan Seniors Program. Um, I stood before you four weeks ago and made a plea for help for our center. The problem is we are not getting meals like we used to. We don't have transportation to get to the center or to get back home. We have to get there the best way we can, and some of us don't even try. We are not getting a nutritious meal. And my reason for standing here today is <coughs> to ask the city council, please consider, reconsider the proposals that have been brought before you. Um, I received a letter from you guys on the 23rd of May, and it guaranteed 100% that you guys were going to be the same behind us. Nothing, absolutely nothing has changed. I talked with Matthew Capps a couple of times, no effort on his part to fix the situation. I don't know what the problem is, but I'm quite sure y'all do. And we are asking, please, do not move Mary Brown. She is the heartbeat, the very heartbeat of the Sullivan Center. I was born and raised in this community, and she has built that center from the ground up. My children went to that center. They went played football to that center. I have a son that coaches football at that center. We need the Thomas Sullivan Center in our community. It just seems like in our community, everything's being closed and taken away from us. So I stand before you. I, I, don't, I don't agree with the way things are going. I don't agree with a proposal that we switch supervisors. No. I don't think that'll fix anything. It's not gonna fix anything. It's not gonna fix the cell phone. It's not gonna bring nutritious meals. That's our point. Changing staff is not gonna be a result to, to bring it about. God bless you, and I thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. I think Mr. Manzi wants to um, address some yes. of this. Mr. Yes, uh, I first want to want to thank you uh, for coming, you and, and Ms. Jones for coming out, and, and all of the uh, citizens from the Lafayette Heights community. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, they came to a council meeting about three or four weeks ago. I believe you might have been out of town then. And at that time, uh, uh, Colby Cooper, our, our chief of staff, uh, made some assurances that some things would happen. And, and I believe that those things are still in the making as far as, as what he's related to me uh, as late as yesterday. So I, I understand that the meals uh, haven't been comparable to what uh, you all were receiving previously, but they're, they're in the process of training a staff member uh, who can take the program uh, and move it forward. And I think at that time when y'all came, they said that it'd take about three to four weeks for that to happen. Yes. Uh, and so... But it, it has. It has not happened. Nobody's yeah. been hired. Nobody's been trained. Nothing has been done. Uh, so uh, is, is there someone here, Mr. Mayor, that might could give us an update on that? Well, Matthew Capps came and spoke to him before the meeting, uh, and he left. Uh, but there are things in process. Uh, maybe it hasn't gotten to the point where the meals are being uh, delivered at this point, but it is not something that's being ignored. Mm -hmm. Four weeks, and that's ignoring me, Matthew. Ma'am? Four weeks in my book, that's ignoring us. Yeah, well, I understand, and that's the I understand way we feel. Yeah. Like Ms. Jones said, we are all race folks. Yeah. And it wouldn't matter to me if, if you were running for dog catcher. I'm going to vote for you because I have that right. I am somebody and have a voice and have the right to be heard. The, the city
situation that Matthew Kapp is, is suggesting, that's not going to help anything. Rich supervisors, for what? That was not the problem. The problem was we don't have a driver. We don't get hot meals. That's the situation we, we come going to be talking <laughs> Not to be changing Ms. Brown or whatever the name is, is there. But that is not a solution, Mr. Mayor, but especially for my community. The uh, children, the yes. everybody loves yeah. this. Yeah. Ms. Yes, Malone, we, we appreciate your, your concerns. <laughs> you uh, I think you may have to uh, meet with uh, maybe Mr. Manzi well, and Mr. Capps kind of on the side to go over some of these things so that you all will know exactly what is going on because these are some administrative moves right. as I have been, uh, has been explained to me and trying to make sure that the sale program continues. I mean, I think that's the greatest concern that's is making sure concern. that the sale yes. program continues yes. And so, again, as I understand it, some changes are going to have to be made to ensure that the sale program continues. Now, what those changes are is not something that this council oversees. I know. But I'm going to let Mr. Manzi, you know, address that with you if, if you want to add uh, to it. I essentially want to say the same thing that uh, Madam President just said. The, from an administrative standpoint, is relative to what personnel is at what center, uh, that isn't a, a role that we play, but the, the most paramount thing for me uh, as your council representative is to make certain that that meal, those meals that you're accustomed to are there. I think that's the number one goal that we want to yes. try to reach. Yes. Uh, one of the things that was offered a few weeks ago was maybe that a bus could come to the center and take them to another sale site where they could get a nutritious meal. Is that something that no. Could could be well. I'm asking, is that something that I, could I, I be? I don't know without checking with Matthew. I know that was something we discussed early on, and so I don't know what the update is. Yes, sir. Uh, well, well, allow us to get all those those answers, uh, Miss Malone, and mm -hmm. I'll be certain to, uh, if necessary, we'll come to the center and meet with the seniors and, and give you all an update on where we are. I appreciate your patience. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Irene Anton. Clinton Street. It's on the agenda. I don't know which one it is. It's about the park, city parks and all of that. Okay. Uh, information was in the agenda about the improvement of the park, parks. And I have been talking about Figures Park, the tennis court, and so forth. And I brought a picture once with this big old hole in the screen that, that goes around the whole park. So when I brought it up and we talked about it, then somebody went out there and it's a nice screen around the park. They say they could not fix the park because it was sinking. But Mrs. Keith was gonna build a arts center there. Well, the ground's supposed to be still sinking, so now I've talked to her. They're not going to build it because you got what you need right there in the floor high school. So I brought this activity sheet that you get from the city that tells what's in all of the different areas. And then it had tennis at Davidson, tennis at, at uh, Lounge and different places. And then when you get to the high school, they say that the floor, Murphy have a lighted court, the floor have lighted court, David have li Davidson have lighted court, school court are for the public use after 4 p.m. Okay, I talked to Mr. Skelton with maintenance, and he said all that need to be done, the grass cutting and relined so the, gr the ground is not sinking. So I hope that we will look into that. Thank you. Ms. Right. Ms. Anton? Ms. Yes, Richardson, sir. go ahead. Uh, what, what she has to share, because I'm, I'm, I'm getting conflicted information regarding that tennis court. Who told you that the court is all right to play on? Well, Mr. Skelton, he said that 
Oh, Tommy Shelton. Yeah, he does property. Oh, with yeah, the school board. With the school board. I, I thought maybe that was someone at the city. Oh, no. The city, the city is going to have to say something about that. Yeah, it's the city. It's that. It's the city's property. Because this little floor, this is a fence, and this is the city. But <coughs> when they tore that defendant's porch, I mean, when they had the fence made up straight on that porch. Okay, Ms. Andong, this is what I'm saying. The school board is telling you, someone from the school board is telling you that the, that the tennis court is just fine. Right. The city, I, uh, um, the report I got from the city that it is not. So we got to resolve the two. Yes, sir. Okay, that's, that's, we got to figure out what's happening. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Thank Anton. You. <coughs> Linda St. John with the Village of Spring Hill. We talked about an anniversary earlier with Elizabeth and also planning and vision, walkability. These are all some key words that I think have really grown uh, around our city. So this is Linda St. John. I think most of us uh, recognize Linda. She is coming to give us a presentation on 10 years um, of work that this community group has been doing for our city. And um, Joel and I were able to see this a little earlier and it's really amazing because you forget how bad it was <laughs> until you see the before and after pictures. So uh, Linda is going to um, talk us through some of that. And Carolyn, I know, is... <laughs> We're going to project this on the wall so some yeah. of you that... Uh, some of you may want to leave, but others that will <laughs> want to stay can just move over to the other side so that you can yeah. see it. We probably uh, need to... Turn We're these lights here. down too, if y'all know where the lights are. Yeah, we got, we got. I just want to say while she's doing that, that this is 10 year, 10 year anniversary and I've been president for 10 years, not because I want to be, because no one else wants to be probably. Um, I've been doing a lot of presentations before the council early on in the early days. And I know Lisa Lambert will attest to this. I have never, ever, ever used all of my allotted time, ever, <laughs> ever. Can y'all find that light so right there? So we're going to cash in a little bit today and, um, and use some of the time that we haven't used. Um, before we start, I, I really just want to thank the council and the administration for supporting our efforts. <laughs> and hopefully we can continue, you know, working together to maybe get another 10 years of improvements. Ten years ago, a group of concerned citizens held a community meeting at Spring Hill College attended by over 500 people. Everyone there was concerned about the deteriorated state of our commercial areas. There seemed to be a lack of planning and no vision for the future. Overwhelmingly, the consensus was that we all wanted to... Ten years ago, a group of concerned. Ten years ago, ten years ago, a group of. Like we said, it was ten years ago. <laughs> hey, John. Stroke. Can you help? Watch the mark.
concerned citizens held a community meeting at Spring Hill College attended by over 500 people. Everyone there was concerned about the deteriorated state of our commercial areas. There seemed to be a lack of planning and no vision for the future. Overwhelmingly, the consensus was that we all wanted to live in a community we could be proud of, and we all believed Spring Hill could be better. In order to move forward, we knew we needed to hire a community planning firm, and since no community in the city of Mobile had ever initiated their own plan, we knew the firm we hired needed to be very well respected and proven. Using funds from a state community planning grant, we hired nationally renowned Dover Colon Partners. A week-long charrette was organized by volunteers involving all the stakeholders, the mayor, all city departments, commercial property owners, developers, merchants, and residents. More than 600 people participated. The result was our master plan, the blueprint for Spring Hill, which was adopted in 2008 by the Planning Commission and the City Council and incorporated into the master plan for the City of Mobile. Every project that the Village of Spring Hill initiates follows the guidelines set forth in this document. Sidewalks were the number one request of Spring Hill residents as well as a key component of the blueprint. The sidewalk projects we have initiated so far have completely transformed our village. We have aggressively pursued highly competitive state grants that require a 20% match, the support of the JL Bedsell Foundation, private donations, and our annual Sidewalkathon have been key to acquiring these funds. The Sidewalkathon began as a way to get children in the community involved and in five years has raised well over $150,000. This summer, construction will begin on sidewalks along South McGregor Avenue, being funded through a partnership between the Village of Spring Hill and our two council members, Gina Gregory and Joel Daves. Our streetscapes outlined in the blueprint tie everything together. Sidewalks, trees, lights, benches, and flowers create a sense of place and define our village. So far, we have planted over 300 trees, placed 20 distinctive old mobile benches, and installed 47 signature village lights. All these features has been funded with private donations, grants, and partnerships between the Village of Spring Hill and property owners. Some examples of these are the Holiday Place before, after, AT&T before, after, Spring Hill College before, after, Service First before, after, and recently, the Baptist Church. Then there are the businesses that took the streetscapes to the next level. It all began with the CVS development in 2008. This is what the site looked like. This is what was approved to be built. The proposal was completely in conflict with the residents of Spring Hill and the blueprint. We worked with a local architect who donated a neighborhood-friendly plan, and we selected the brick, windows, and other key features for the development. And after all the dust settled, this first development turned out to be a really great beginning for our village. CVS also agreed to construct the plaza designed by the village of Spring Hill in front of the development. It has quickly become a popular gathering place and the village center envisioned by our blueprint. To complete the plaza, a new village clock was installed as a result of private fundraising. Next, Regions Bank, before, after. Once the streetscapes in front of the bank was completed, we approached the bank with the idea of turning the underutilized property to the west of the bank into the very first pocket park in the city of Mobile. After fundraising efforts, we were able to construct this beautiful public park on private property for everyone in the city of Mobile to enjoy today. Next, we focused on the Moore branch of the Mobile Public Library, the second most used library in the city of Mobile. After securing a grant, we renovated the courtyard and funded surveillance equipment necessary to once again open the front doors of the library, 
which had been closed to the public for over 40 years. Now, the courtyard is being used as it was intended for educational seminars, receptions, and children playing with the giant chess set donated through the initiatives of the Village of Spring Hill. We finished off the project by placing the very first public sculpture in Spring Hill, appropriately named the Flame of Knowledge. Lastly, Alabama Power funded and built this decorative wall designed by the Village of Spring Hill to screen their substation located in the heart of the village. We also collaborated with the city and county on two large road infrastructure projects. The first was redesigning the intersection of Old Shell Road and McGregor Avenue to improve the aesthetics and safety of this busy intersection. Large pedestrian islands were installed along with clearly marked wide crosswalks and pedestrian controls making it safer for everyone to cross. Second was the recently completed $1.1 million roundabout our largest project to date and also part of our blueprint. The Village of Spring Hill raised money to fund preliminary engineering, design, as well as a feasibility study. Then with the assistance and support of Gina Gregory prioritizing the project within her district, we approached Connie Hudson to submit the project in the County Pays You Go program for funding. Five years later, not only did we meet all of our objectives, this successful public-private partnership between the city, county, and the village of Spring Hill resulted in the very first roundabout constructed on a public street in the city of Mobile. We would have never been able to accomplish such an aggressive project without the support of Gina and Connie. The village of Spring Hill is a grassroots success story. In the last 10 years, we have initiated, driven, and helped fund close to $4 million in infrastructure improvements for the city of Mobile in our village. These accomplishments have only been possible because of the dedication and hard work of our board members and so many others who have been willing to help give so much to forward our initiatives. It literally takes a village to build one. Thank you for your support in helping us put all these exciting projects on the ground in our community and continuing our efforts to make Mobile a great city to live in. <laughs> Ten years ago, a group of concerned... I just want to follow up by saying we really could never have done this without the city council and the administration backing what we've done. Fred and Gina are the two original council members 10 years ago when we first started mm -hmm. and then J John, John came on yeah. you know, quite soon after that. And a lot of what we did were firsts in the city we pioneered areas that a lot of communities had not done, and we got the support from the council, and, and hopefully we're going to continue to get the support from the council in the next 10 years. And <laughs> maybe somebody else will be standing up here then as president of the Village of Spring Hill. But thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, Linda. Yeah, the, the biggest stepping stone, of course, was getting the plan approved and, and then the optional zoning. So um, it really does take a long time to... Um, rack up these kinds of successes that they have, but it, it's all because of the community group that Linda is the, the chair of and, and um, all of the volunteers who were here with you. And Linda, you didn't introduce Carolyn and what you want to, well, and Kimmy. Everybody thinks that I'm the only member of the village <laughs> of Spring Hill because I'm the one only anyone sees. But uh, we have an amazing team and most of the people who work with me are professionals. And they're all at work, <laughs> except me. Um, but anyway, they're, they're very, very professional, and I appreciate so much their willingness to give so much of their time away from their jobs and their families, because it really is a labor of love to have the professionalism of these people that work with me every day to forward our initiatives. And with me now are Kimmy Oates and Carolyn um, Miller. Carolyn handles all of our website design and any communications that we do. And anything we write goes through Kimmy because she was a she was a um, math teacher, but she should have been an English teacher. <laughs> and, <laughs> and nothing nothing goes out of our organization that she does not read. And it's just everything is very professional. And she is everyone, like I said, is a, has been a joy to have. And, and one other thing I just want everybody to know too, if you don't, is that Linda and her group have also mentored other groups. In the, in the city that have formed. We have worked with the Peninsula Group, with the Midtown Group, and also with John's, I think it was 
Skyland with Makita and her group. So Linda and her group have mentored these and helped them write grants. So we want this, this model to continue throughout the city because we found that it's a success story and we want all communities to, to be able to find the kind of success that, <coughs> that the village of Spring Hill has. Uh, Ma Madam Mr. President, Richardson? Yes, I, I would like to also say that uh, not only have you mentored other groups who are trying to really duplicate what you all have done up there, but you are, you are inspiring groups <laughs> to organize. Yeah. On Thursday night, uh, the Tobinville Crichton group, uh, they're gonna form a, five, well, they've already formed a 501c3, and they're gonna focus on uh, redevelopment as you all did. And I'm saying you all were, you all were the reason, main reason, uh, that they got that, this inspiration uh, to take, a, to take on their own community. So we're gonna, um, they're gonna officially organize themselves Thursday night. We'll probably be calling on you to come over to share some of your ideas with them. But you are doing great work and your work is, your work is beginning to spread across the city and as it, as it does, we're all gonna be better off. Madam. Mr. Davis, oh, Mr. Manzi. Yes, ma'am, I just there? wanted to, to echo the comments from uh, Councilman Richardson uh, in District 2. We have a similar initiative that'll be kicked off in about three weeks and I'll certainly be uh, contacting you so that hopefully you can engage with them and provide uh, any opinions or any expertise that you'd like to share with them. Uh, we see that the model works and we want to uh, deploy it in District 2. Thank you. I also would like to commend uh, Linda and Sissy Hungerford and Carolyn and uh, Kimmy, Kimmy um, and all the people that work with you uh, for the really remarkable job you've done uh, and the wonderful things you've been able to accomplish over the last uh, 10 years. Like my colleagues, I think it's a model uh, of community and neighborhood involvement that can be replicated in other areas of our city. I think our city is stronger when we have organized, productive neighborhoods, when people get together in their neighborhoods and meet each other and, and get together behind projects. And uh, I, I, I really commend you for that. I, I look forward uh, to replication of, of what the uh, Village of Spring Hill has done in all of our neighborhoods across the city because I think we're a much stronger city when we have strong neighborhoods. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. Appreciate it. And tell Sissy we missed her today. All right. Thank you. All right. Ms. Lambert. Resolutions held over 37313314 are recommending approval to the ABC Board for issuance of a retail beer table wine off premises only license for first stop on Spring Hill Avenue and for issuance of a lounge retail liquor class two package store license for first stop on package store on Spring Hill Avenue. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 21347, authorized contract with Sunset Contracting for Bolton Branch Creek Channel Repairs. So, so moved. moved. Second. Discussion? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Davis? Uh, this is a very important uh, project uh, for certain residents in District 5. Uh, we uh, this is a this is a big ditch that uh, part of it this part we're talking about today runs between University and um, Azalea Road. Uh, there are a number of residents whose yards back up uh, to Bolton's branch. We had included in uh, this year's uh, capital improvement plan, uh, I think it was about $85,000 to do the engineering to address the the crumbling uh, of this of this. Uh, stream, the crumbling sides of the stream. Uh, we have residents whose backyards are falling into it. Uh, we have big gaps, uh, big holes in the ground opening up behind the walls. It's just a big problem. And as I say, we had put about $85,000 in it in this year's capital improvement plan to uh, begin the engineering to fix it. But the rains we had earlier this year show that we really couldn't wait until next year and uh, we went ahead and kind of borrowed money from uh, next fiscal year's plan in order to address it this, this year. And I wanna thank uh, Nick Amberger and his team for uh, 
working so hard to get us lined up to to address these repairs uh, and I'm very I'm delighted we can we can begin to fix this for all these people that, that back up to it thank you all right. anyone else all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed 21349 authorized contractor for Delta ports and maritime for the city of Mobile Alabama cruise terminal corrective works for the Delta seaport passenger boarding bridge so moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 21350 authorized contract amendment to the sole source contract with Lytic Inc. to correct wording. So, so moved. moved. Second. Discussion? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> All right. Don't forget. <laughs> All right. 21351. And 352, authorizing contracts with Sexton Lawn and Landscape for core aeration of various athletic playing fields and city parks, and with REB and L doing business as True Green to spread lime fertilizer and herbicide, herbicide on various athletic playing fields and city parks. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 21353, authorized contract. With Thompson Engineering for City of Mobile, Alabama Cruise Terminal Mooring Hardware Remediation Design Services. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 31355. Authorize the city to apply for and receive a TAP grant for sidewalks along Bitten Spur Road. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ordinances being introduced for the first time, 28023 through 64026. Motion to su suspend the rules for immediate consideration of Ordinance 64026 and the rest was available for one week. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 64026, amend Chapter 64.3.1 of the City Code of down, of the Mobile, City of Mobile Code, Downtown Development District. Motion to for two weeks. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Consent resolutions being introduced for the first time, 03368 through 58359. Motion to suspend the rules for immediate consideration of resolutions 03368 through 58359. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Zero three three sixty eight three sixty nine and three seventy for reappointing Harris Oswald and Nicholas Holmes III to the Architectural Review Board, and reappointing Carl Butler to the History Museum of Mobile. Right. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Forty six three fifty seven and three fifty eight um, designate the corner of Adams and Robbins Streets to Emma Reed Way. So move. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. Unless you want me to take them separate. Okay. okay. And change the name of Swim Club Road to Win Lee Drive. So moved. Second. Discussion? Yes. Mrs. Rich? Uh, on uh, 358, I just would like to make sure that the community knows that this is um, a closed neighborhood swim club. Uh, there is no one that lives on the street. The gentleman who purchased the property and is now building his home, this is in the Amberley neighborhood, um, is, had requested that his name be given to the street instead of Swim Club Road. So um, certainly see no harm in that and actually very glad that someone is coming in and redeveloping the property. And, and um, I don't know if he's keeping the pool or removing the pool, but it's not going to be a city problem. And it, and it might have been. Just think this is a good thing. All right, very good. All right, all yes. in favor, um, Mr. Nandy? Yes, ma'am. I wanted to read uh, this information relative to Ms. Emma Reed into the record. Uh, Ms. Reed has been a resident in the Lafayette Heights community for over 60 years, uh, and due to uh, failing health, will have to uh, be moved to an assisted living facility. Uh, but she truly is a community fixture. Uh, she's lived at a present address on. Uh, for more than 55 years has touched numerous lives in her community and in her career as an educator. Her education occupation began at Theodore Junior High School, now M.W. Burroughs Elementary School, and continued to Farmville Elementary. 
uh, and she served at several other schools. Prior to retiring in 1987, she was principal at Gorgas and Craighead Elementary Schools. And after retiring, uh, she worked for five years as director of student teachers at the University of South Alabama, and then as director of the Head Start program at Most Pure Heart of Mary School. She's a longtime member of Tolmanville Warren United Methodist Church and was married for over 50 years to the late Mr. Simi Reed. Uh, and she served as the secretary of the Lafayette Heights Community Association for more than 17 years. So on next Tuesday at 12.30, we will have this uh, street uh, dedication ceremony in our honor and we're, we're hopefully inviting all of the city officials, uh, Mr. Mayor, if you're able, we'd certainly love for you to be there as we uh, pay tribute to Miss Emma Love Reed. All right. Awesome. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 58-359, authorized removal of weeds, group 1538. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? CIP resolutions being introduced for the first time, 21-360. Well, because it's being removed, so I made a consideration of resolution 21-360. Second, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 21360, authorized contract with Hagen, Hagen Storm Fence of Mobile for Crawford Murphy Park, dog area fencing and site furnishings. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Yes, Madam President. Okay. Uh, this project has been uh, one near and dear to the hearts of many residents in this community. Uh, certainly grateful. Uh, for the leadership exhibited by Ms. Jean Green. Uh, also, we'll be paying tribute to the late uh, Danielle Juzan by naming this dog park in our honor and at a later council meeting. And we're appreciative of all of the efforts of Ms. Elise Gonan and One Mobile uh, for working with the neighborhood and raising the funds necessary along with uh, CIP funds uh, to make this dog park a reality. All right, very good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolutions being introduced for the first time, 09361 through 21366. By council resolutions, 09361 through 21366 for level one week. All right. Call for public hearing scheduled June 21st, 41367. Call for public hearing to rezone property at 11, 111 Short Texas Street, southwest corner of Short Texas Street and South Royal Street extending to the northwest corner of Texas Street and South Royal Street extending to the east side of St. Emmanuel Street from I-1 to I-2. All right, so moved. Second. Discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Announcements. Start with Mr. Daves. Oh, thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> Caught you by surprise. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, there will be a meeting of the uh, City Council Finance Committee today at 2 o'clock in the Council Conference Room. Uh, this will be uh, designed to discuss the process that we will be following uh, in the, in, with respect to the 2017 and 2018 Capital Improvement Plan. Uh, again, 2 o'clock at uh, the City Council Conference Room. This coming Monday is uh, Memorial Day. Memorial Day uh, is, uh, was really begun uh, right after the American Civil War uh, when it was called Decoration Day and was designed uh, to um, recognize the sacrifice uh, that, uh, that, the, that the soldiers who fought in the war between the states, especially those who had given their lives, uh, had made. Uh, that was... Uh, changed uh, shortly thereafter to Memorial Day, and uh, it remains a day in which we set aside some time to remember those uh, men and women uh, who have uh, served in our armed forces, and particularly those who have made the ultimate sacrifice to ensure that the liberties that we have today we continue to enjoy. Uh, we, as we look back over the, uh, uh, to the beginning of our republic. Uh, what we see throughout is that in times of need, we have had men and women uh, leave their civilian occupations, leave their homes, leave their families, and go and uh, put their lives at risk to preserve our way of government and the liberties we enjoy today. And then, 
Then, when it's over, they return to their civilian occupations and their lives and their families. Uh, their sacrifice, those who have given their lives and those who showed up in times of need should never be forgotten. And I ask that all of us take some time on Monday to remember them. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Mr. Davis. Mrs. Rich. Oh, thank you, that's a surprise too. <laughs> Appreciate it. Keeping y'all on your toes yes. today. Yes. And, and I too wish <laughs> to um, give everyone a um, reminder about the patriotic concert, which is on Memorial Day at Medal of Honor Park at 7 p.m. Um, it's a free concert and hope that people will come out, perhaps picnic, and we're looking forward to that and appreciate that all volunteer band that comes out and entertains and does a great venue. Again, this will be strictly patriotic music in honor of Memorial Day, which uh, I know is so important to many, many people. And um, so just would hope that you would come out and join us and be part of that event. And I also wish everyone a safe Memorial Weekend. And if you're boating, those gentlemen <laughs> remind us to wear it and um, stay safe and enjoy your holiday. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Manzi. Yes, Madam President, I want to uh, echo the comments and sentiments and appreciations uh, articulated by my co my colleagues. Uh, Memorial Day ought to be a day on and not a day off. And I uh, recently had an opportunity to fly, and in my uh, period of layover in Atlanta, saw uh, a family who was saying goodbye to a relative who was going off for service. You know, I've seen that on TV and, and other places, but to be that close and to see that emotion uh, certainly gave me an, a, new, a new appreciation for the sacrifice uh, that Councilman Davis just, uh, just told us about. So uh, this will be a different kind of Memorial Day for me, and I certainly have a new uh, appreciation for the sacrifice of those who, who choose to go off and to, to fight for our way of life. Uh, so I am appreciative of that and, and think we all should be. Uh, and then I want to end my comments by just again uh, saying that uh, our colleague, Councilman uh, Small, is certainly in my thoughts and in my prayers. I uh, work very closely with him and uh, will be praying that he will return back to the city of Mobile uh, expeditiously and completely in great health. Uh, we'll be praying for his mother, his family, uh, and his staff members, uh, I didn't realize how uh, tight and how uh, close that they were as a family until this incident took place. And so uh, we believe that God is not only here, but he's there in Africa and that he'll look out for him uh, there. Uh, and just want to repeat the offer that I've made along with our Council Vice President Richardson that if we can be of any assistance to the residents in District 3, only an email or a Facebook message or a phone call away. All right, Mr. Williams. Um, thank you, Madam President. Uh, I'm gonna, um, as, as shortly as I can, not necessarily correct my colleagues, but, but just clarify something. Um, there's no, in my opinion, happy Memorial Day. Um, and it's not a day to go shopping, but if you choose to do that, you know, Please, please do so in a large way, right before you take a moment uh, in your own way to remember those who died in service. This is not, this is not Veterans Day all over again. Um, and it, this is not the day to grab a veteran and say, thanks for your service. Uh, this is a day in your own private way, and maybe in a public way, as long as it's not for, for other purposes. Uh, do something very special, um, and maybe even visit a family uh, that has lost a loved one in service of our country, in, in service, not who was a veteran and died, but someone who died serving the country, who, as Mr. Daves pointed out, gave the ultimate sacrifice, or made the ultimate sacrifice. This is a very serious, day, and, and maybe in a true sense, a holy day. Um, those people who have given uh, for our freedoms, something that, that I can't even fathom 
um, it is sometimes designated on households and on vehicles and on lapel pins, a gold star. Uh, we recently had people from all over Alabama and from the region in our city to celebrate two things. One, Blue Star, which is for those who are sacrificing. In other words, they have service men and women that are separated from their families. But we also had a very short ceremony at Battleship Park for Gold Star, families, that is spouses and family members who lost loved ones in service for our country. This is, Monday's their day. Monday's may be a day that we can think about those who wear the Gold Star or have the Gold Star emblem on their vehicle or hanging on a flag in their house. Thank you. All right, thanks, Mr. Williams and uh, Mr. Richardson. Uh, thank you, Madam, Madam President. I alluded to, to this earlier. Uh, citizens of uh, the Tobinville and Crane community will be coming together uh, on Thursday the 26th, <laughs> May 26th, at the Faith City Cathedral Church. And this church is located on the corner of Mobile Street and Mill Street. On the, it is on the <coughs> northwest corner, big beautiful church there in Mobile and Mill Street. Uh, and they're going to be meeting for the purpose of um, officially organizing a 501c3 nonprofit organization that will plan the redevelopment and economic development efforts in the Tobinville and Crying community. I'm asking all the citizens from Crying and Tobinville who have an interest in participating in planning the development of your community to come to this important meeting. We expect to leave there with, off with officers. Uh, I expect them to elect their officers and uh, start the planning, uh, uh, start uh, set, set forth a uh, mechanism whereby other citizens can join them in planning what they want their community, community to be. And I would like to join the rest in saying that uh, I'm praying for a speedy recovery and return of Councilman C.J. Small. And I'd like for the citizens of District 3 to know that District 1 and 2 will see about 3. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right, thank you, Mr. Richardson. Uh, last thing, we do have several announcements in my district. I have a meeting on Thursday evening with members of the Mobile Terrace Community Development Corporation. Um, just going over some needs that they have in their community. We're also planning a cleanup, so we'll be talking about that. Old Shell work was done this weekend uh, prior to beginning the actual resurfacing. We had a lot of inlets that needed to be repaired before we started on the resurfacing, so they worked on that over the weekend. And if you drive down Old Shell, I mean, not Old Shell Road, but it's close by, um, University Avenue over by University of South Alabama, you'll see some preliminary work going on that is getting ready to start some landscaping on the medians all along University and Old Shell Road. The University of South Alabama is partnering with us here at the city thanks to some capital improvement funds that uh, we set aside for them. They are doing the irrigation work now. They will also do the planting and the maintaining and everything. So that's the kind of partnership, Mayor, that uh, <laughs> we, we like to, to have. Um, same thing goes for the Mobile Botanical Gardens that the mayor uh, mentioned earlier. That was a partnership that we actually were able to give them the funds and they are doing the work. So um, we get to go out and take advantage of it, but they are actually performing the work out there. We're doing the same thing with the Japanese gardens. We provided some funding for them and so they are doing some work themselves out of the Japanese gardens. So a lot of work going on out in District 7 to um, really improve the amenities that we have and hopefully to bring more people out to see you know, what is available in the, the western part of the city. Um, let's see, a couple other things I want to make sure we all know about and that is a public services committee meeting will be scheduled. Mr. Uh, Richardson will announce that. That's to look at 64-026 um, yes. regarding the, uh, the downtown code. And um, I think that's it for me. Any other announcements from uh, from the council or 
administration at this point. All right. With that, I will move to convene an executive session of the council for the purpose of discussing legal ramifications of and legal options for some pending litigation. The council is in receipt of a letter from our council attorney declaring that the exception allowing an executive session for this purpose is applicable to the plan discussion and that the executive session is allowable and proper under the Open Meetings Act. So I need a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, the council will not reconvene after this executive session. Thank you.